I'm here with Rocky. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what you've been working on, bud? Sure. I'm Rocky Lopka. I'm the CTO at Magenic, and uh, here adding some tests to the uh, toolbox project. So that sounds like super easy, but when you're looking at adding tests to a project that's already existing, sometimes that requires a little retooling. Did you did you have any of that happen? Oh yeah. Uh, t testing's never actually easy. No, I know. I'm just saying it sounds easy. <laughs> but if you go to your manager and you're like, hey, we're going to add some tests, they're like, oh, that's super easy. But that's not what it is, right? No. In, in fact, there's uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, existing code, so we've got to figure out what the code is doing and then, uh, in some cases, figure out ways to uh, be able to generate uh, sample data or, or known data sets and, mm -hmm. and uh, run through the code. And so we've had to... Um, change a, a few things here and there. Luckily, I've uh, only found one real bug so far today, so that's, that's encouraging. That's good. So is, there, is this the case, and you tell me, it, if you're going into a project and there's not some tests, do you find that having to write some tests requires maybe sort of rewriting way the application might be working in order for the tests to work a little bit better? Sometimes, yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at what you've done and see if we can find any of that. Sure. So. Really, the uh, project had very limited testing uh, to start with. Everybody was joking there was one. But mm -hmm. That's not true. There, there were, was there, three, right? There, there were three. Yeah. That's right. Uh, and uh, uh, But then I've added some uh, some new ones here. So, uh, for example, we've got a uh, test that is running through the idea of uh, can we get activity detail. Uh -huh. And... Uh, um, on the surface, you'd say, well, that's that's easy, right? If we look down here, the actual tests are not that hard. We, we uh, basically create a query uh, and then call the handler. And then in this case, I expect not to get anything back. So I'm saying, well, is it, you know, a null? Um, so that, that was the easy part. But then when you start saying, well, what about the test for something that does exist? Say, well, we do expect to get something back. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Um, but then there's all this code here because we have to actually have something to get back. Right. And you know, in days gone by, um, and I'm sure a lot of people maybe still do this, we'd set up a, a test database and have some sort of script every time you run your tests. Mm -hmm. It would reinitialize the data, the actual database. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, um, why I remember those days. No, it was horrible like time. Nightmare, yeah, right? it was a nightmare. <laughs> Um, so in this case, what we've got is uh, we're using Entity Framework with uh, uh, an in-memory database model. I see. And uh, um, so, in fact, if I go up one level uh, higher, um, and, and here's one of the areas where we started refactoring some of this, is we've got a base class for the tests that at least sets up some of the uh, um, base configuration uh, information. And, and in this case, in particular, is setting up our Entity Framework uh, to be in, it creates essentially an empty um, in memory database. In memory database, um, and and all of this is using dependency injection to pull the appropriate resources, sure. just like the the app itself does. So then, back in my actual test class, I'm able to just implement a load test data uh, method, retrieve that pre-existing empty entity okay. framework context. And then fill it, uh, up, fill it up, fill it up with, and, and uh, here, here's an example where the app itself has got a sample data generator so that it's possible to run the website and, and you know just kind of see some mm -hmm. meaningful information. Um, but that's really quite large and complex. It's six, seven hundred lines of code that mm. creates a complete um, working set for uh, somebody to play with, right? Sure. As, as an end user. Uh, we want something for tests that's a lot more focused on what we're really trying to test. And I so see. this is kind of the minimum uh, set to get an activity in that an activity has to, we have to be within a tenant, an activity has to be within a campaign, and then I can create an activity itself. Interesting. Um, so that's, that's like the, the bare minimum uh, necessary. And then once I've got that into the uh, entity framework context, then I can turn around Start and, pulling it out. and call the actual um, production code the, that would pull this back out and make sure that I really got it back. And it's important to, to, to be clear here that we're not testing Entity Framework's capability to return data. We're testing to make sure that the detail query is and the detail and the detail query handler are doing the right thing. Well, and, and it's really this um, detail query handler that we're primarily testing and because it's got code sure. that does a, a query against the database or against Entity Framework. Mm -hmm. 
um, and then does some mapping of that information back, and we want to make sure. And, and so this test is um, really not complete the way that I've got it now. Mm -hmm. All I've got so far is that to make sure I'm getting something back, sure. um, I need to uh, flesh out the test um, and make sure I'm getting all of the expected values back. Um, okay, yeah. so, I've, so I saw on the test that you're using the fact attribute, so you're using X unit, is that right? Yes, that's Why right. Why X unit? Um, in my case, yeah. it was a decision made before I got oh, here. Oh, so that's, so, that's uh, good. It was easy to make the decision, was, right? For, for me, this was not a problem. So let's talk um, a little bit about the tooling and how the tooling is helping you with unit tests. Is the tooling doing anything for you when it comes to unit tests? Well, the tooling uh, is fairly nice. You know, built into Visual Studio is this idea of the test explorer and, mm -hmm. and uh, test runner. So I'm able to just uh, and run up here and say, oh, I'd like to you know, run all of my tests. Um, it'll do a quick build. And uh, if we go back to the test explorer now, we'll see um, right across here the bar. Mm -hmm. um, I've got one failing test, which I know I'm working on that now. Oh, awesome. Um, so I expect that to be failing. I'm not done with it. Cool. Um, and then I've got all a set of tests that are running. More than three? Um, more than three. Nice. So we were doing good. That's awesome. Um, yeah, this is not my normal view. This looks good for demo purposes, sure. right? Just to say, oh, look at all the red and the green. But um, in, in practice, I think um, if you sort by class, then you start to be able to uh, zoom in and say, well, you know, right now, what we were looking at was the get activity detail. Mm -hmm. And here's the two tests that exist within that context. And it looks like they're passing. And it looks like those two are passing. So in your experience, and you've been doing this for a long time, Code coverage, is there, I know there's not like a, you You don't have to hit 100%, but you certainly shouldn't be like at 20%. Right. I mean, what do you, what do you feel sort of like a good sort of smell for how much should I be testing? I really think it's, it's difficult to narrow down on a specific percentage. Sure. Um, certainly I've worked or, or interacted with places that are like, oh, we want 100%. And I don't think that's, um, Cost effective, right? Usually, I mean, yeah. yeah. If if you can even achieve it, you're spending way more money than you should be, right? Um, but yeah, twenty percent is typically bad, pretty pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. So you probably want somewhere, you know, well north of fifty percent. Um, but I also think that you have to look at what you're testing because there's um, uh, code that's a lot more complex or, right. or a lot more on the critical path, and then there's code that's that's arguably less important. Your perspective, so. I've always liked your perspective because you always put it in terms of what's it going to cost? Well, yeah, at the end of the day, we're, you know, un unless you're sending something to Mars and, and the, any given little teeny mistake becomes super expensive, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for the rest of us, uh, it really is a, a business decision about just how much do I have to spend to um, build and, and get this done versus uh, what kind of value am I going to get? Absolutely, from, because from in, in, in some cases, you're not going to get test co coverage over auto-implemented properties if you don't do a test on them, and that's kind of a waste of time. Well, certainly. Yeah. Right. And, okay. And it, yeah, and I think too, you know, that's that by itself is a good point because if you are uh, one of the organizations that invests heavily in code generation, and a, and a lot do, sure, um, then you got to ask yourself, well, is there really value in having unit tests? Not to say that we shouldn't have tests, but unit tests on generated code, when you're never going to fix the code, you're going to fix the generator. Yeah. Right. Right. So if you're going to test anything, you probably so want to test, test the generator, generator to make sure that it's coming up with the results that you're after. Awesome. So what do you have? What kind of work do you have ahead of you? Uh, well, boy, we're just really getting started on this testing. Um, so we're, you know, I've got to flesh out some of the tests that are here. And, and now that we've got a model, I think it'll be easier um, maybe to get more people involved in writing some more tests on, on more handlers. Well, awesome. Well, I'll let you get to work, bud. Great. Thanks. All right. Thanks, bud.